You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Good day. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. If you have any questions about this program, please contact us at the Preventive Medicine Center. We have a website, www.the, T-H-E, P-M-C, Preventive Medicine Center, dot O-R-G, the P-M-C dot O-R-G. And we have a place where you can send emails there. And uh, if you wish to speak with me directly, you may call me at the office, and that number is 860-549-3444. Well, um, what to talk about today? Uh, any new major breakthroughs? I read an interesting article about people who had colon cancer that had spread to the liver, and what they did is they began infusing chemotherapy through a catheter into the artery of the liver. It's usual that we put catheters in veins, but they put a catheter in the artery that went to the liver and they kept bathing the uh, metastatic, the spread portion of that cancer. Uh, let's see, uh, any chance we could move this thing over here so I could see me, this tripod? Uh, it, so, um, so they put this arterial catheter in and infused chemotherapy, and it turns out that the patients who had the arterial catheter actually did better. By the way, anybody notice any difference in my outfit uh, today? I'm not wearing my white jacket. It was too cold. Isn't it interesting that with global, no, let's see, what's it called? Climate change, that we're having such a cold spring. Now, we did have a warm winter uh, in general. Uh, with some rather remarkable snows, but this is New England. As I often tell people about weather, the, uh, when I came to New England in 1970, winter began November 1st, and it really did not begin to clear until April 1st. And now winter comes uh, December, and it's pretty much gone by the end of February, with occasional little... Uh, uh, hiccups uh, during March and or April. And apparently there have been some huge snows in April, but that was in the distant past. Uh, every now and then someone reminds me of the snow being so heavy that cars were literally left on I-84 downtown, West Hart uh, downtown Hartford uh, because the snow had gotten so deep and they hadn't been able to plow it that uh, people just got out of their cars and left them there. Uh, anyhow, uh, so much for climate change, uh, warm winter, cold spring. Uh, one of the ways I know that is my, let's see, my electric bill was way down this month because uh, I was not using any air conditioning. It wasn't warm. Now, let's see here. Arterial catheter, what else is new? Uh, the field of electrophysiology, atrial fibrillation, is a common, common condition. And there are many people who are on what are called NOAX or DOAX, novel oral anticoagulants, uh, which are like uh, 
Eliquis or Xarelto. There's no generics for those, even though they have generic names. Uh, Pixaban uh, and uh, Xarelto is, well, is that, yeah, that's the commercial name. Uh, anyhow, uh, those to me are the preferred forms of anticoagulation. The problem is they're expensive. And so not everyone can switch over. It is a question of working the system. And speaking of working the system, I had a patient uh, who went to the pharmacy to pick up a medication called Limbrel. Now, Limbrel is like Advil. It's like uh, Aleve, Naproxen, Ibuprofen, Celebrex, except that it's a botanical extract. It is a nutraceutical. It's a plant. And the side effects of it and the toxicity of it are almost none. Well, when they went to pick up the medication, the 90-day supply was $2,200. And I, I couldn't just handle that in my thinking about there's something wrong. Somebody's not negotiating the way they should. Now, if you have an insurance plan, that covers your medication costs. I don't know why that insurance plan isn't negotiating with the manufacturer of this medication, Limbrel, to bring the price down. As a matter of fact, um, I saw a certificate for a 75% reduction in the cost, which still left uh, the price, a 75% reduction of uh, 2200 would be uh, about $300, 200 to $300. Uh, still per month. And I do think that, that that's sort of negotiable, not really. Uh, I still think that's too high. Why? You know, we have all this activism now. We have groups out there that are uh, protesting uh, Trump's position on health care, uh, that are protesting uh, climate. Uh, there was a protest uh, uh, by doctors to uh, preserve science and medicine, uh, climate change, uh, women's rights. Uh, I think we need somebody to get out there and protest uh, these high prices. The time has come when people can no longer just sit back and complain like I am doing. It's like uh, those people get out and protest. You, know, you need to get organized. And if you disagree with them, that's fine, too. This is the United States. One of the positions that um, uh, Al Sharpton and uh, Robert Reich and uh, Fox News and I all agree about, that shutting down speakers is absolutely wrong. The most important privilege that we have in the United States is the right to speak your mind without repercussion, except at the ballot box or uh, at the sit-in counter. So um, uh, I think that it's it, it, the group Antifa uh, and the group BAM, by any means necessary, have it absolutely wrong, and uh, that hopefully they won't turn up at my business or house, but... Uh, uh, shutting down open discussion, gentlemanly discussion, and I'm sorry that for that word not being uh, uh, going both directions, male and female, but it is the common usage. Somebody wants to help a brother out and give me another word for gentlemanly, uh, that's fine. But I believe that gentlemanly discourse is the key. You can agree with me, but agree with me calmly and present your information, and then let's talk about it and try to work it out. And if we agree to disagree, then we agree to disagree. But that does not mean that you start breaking windows, throwing rocks, uh, picking up bicycle stands, uh, uh, using uh, clubs, uh, beating up people, and so on. That is absolutely wrong. Uh, now, let's see. I wanted to look up... Um, one of my, um, hmm. I want to get to my email because I have, um, here's MedPage today. MedPage is one of my favorite uh, educational sites. Cardio break exercise in a pill. No, 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 that's not a good one. Uh, there isn't any shortcut to doing things. No, that's not true. 
I was about to say there's no shortcut to exercise. And there are these intense short periods of exercise with high intensity exercise, period of rest, high intensity periods of exercise. And uh, if, that, if you think that's the equivalent of maybe walking two or three miles at four miles an hour outside, no, it's not the equivalent. But on the other hand, it does a really great job at getting people into shape. I saw a retired oncology surgeon recently that I hadn't seen in a while. I was at the Gerasati Cardiology Symposium put on by St. Francis Hospital. And uh, he came up to me, and like I said, he's retired. And uh, since he retired, he's gone to aqua aerobics, uh, I'm not sure where, and uh, gee, he looks 10 years younger. So exercise makes you feel better, makes you look better, makes you stronger, and is essential, as are the five basic activities that I talk about all the time. Breathing, breathing clean air. Uh, I'm against inhaling marijuana. I'm not sure that I think eating it uh, or drinking it is a good idea. Uh, breathing clean air, drinking clean water, uh, maybe a cup a day of coffee, uh, four drinks of alcohol per week or less, or less. Alcohol is toxic at any dose, and the whole question gets to be about all the things I say, how much will the body tolerate before it begins to develop a disease process? And of course, that varies with people's individual genetic predisposition. Genes are not destiny. Genes are not hardly ever destiny. Uh, it's sort of like you can count on the world to be the way it is. So if you have high blood pressure in your family, that's because those people with that gene for high blood pressure do what is necessary to allow the expression of that tendency to high blood pressure. They eat wrong, they don't exercise enough, too much salt, too much alcohol, overweight, uh, so on and so on. And so high blood pressure is 95% plus curable. High cholesterol is 95% plus curable. Diabetes is 95% plus curable. And uh, <clears throat> which brings me to the discussion of Obamacare and Trump care. The, the way I see it is uh, Obama created a mentality that we, the government, are going to take care of you. Trump care has not come up with the alternative yet, but here's, here's the idea that should go out. If you don't want to have high health care costs, then don't allow yourself to become sick. And that is, uh, there's uh, some kind of list uh, of seven things that people are supposed to be able to do, uh, a certain amount of exercise, uh, proper body weight, a very high fiber diet, uh, not smoking, and something like 5%, 3%, 7% of the population have all three, five, or seven of those things that are required to be healthy. Look. Don't complain about the cost. Do what you need to so that you don't become ill and need health care. I tell my patients all the time, listen to what I say, do what I recommend, then you can stay away from me and, uh, and not have to pay the parking, not have to pay the copay, not have to pay the copay on the medications, uh, not need to take the medication, not experience the side effects. And it all comes from breathing correctly, drinking correctly, eating correctly, exercising correctly, and then the last one, which has gotten, uh, for quite a while, has been a problem in our culture, and that is unrealistic expectations. Unrealistic expectations. People think the world should be different than the way it is. Th people think that they shouldn't have to deal with the world the way it is. The world is the way it is. If you want your freedom, you will deal with the world realistic, realistically and politely. And uh, I know uh, good guys come in last and so on and so on. I also know that perseverance is everything and the turtle won the race between the hare and the turtle and so on. 
uh, uh, and the little choo-choo who said, I think I can, I think I can. I wrote a paper a number of years ago. Um, actually, I, I just wrote a paper. about. Um, I'll get back to the one that I wrote a number of years ago and sent it to uh, Robert Spector, who's Department of Justice chief down in New Haven. It was on narcotics. And he and I are going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, hat off or tip, hat tip to Robert Spector in New Haven and the Department of Justice. Um, he liked it. Uh, he didn't understand some of the scientific stuff in it, but uh, we will go over that tomorrow. Now, the paper that I wrote a number of years ago, I thought was so clever that I named, uh, but it didn't get published. It got rejected outright. Uh, it was named Potent Patient Protective publication. I thought PPPP was so clever. Well, it was so clever it got rejected. And um, I have a hard time finishing tasks. I suppose that's because I don't really have all my ducks lined up in a row from personality to diet to exercise to rest or whatever. Uh, you've got to name of the show. What is the name of the show? The name of the show is putting it all together. Putting it all together is exactly what is necessary to be reasonably, not perfectly, successful in life and how to stay out of trouble. Uh, anyhow, um, so the potent patient protective publication, um, I was reading, um, uh, as I usually do uh, on the Internet and one of my educational sites, and it talked about magnesium and it talked about cholesterol level, and it talked about a whole bunch of things that were listed in my paper, which uh, as brand, it was, this is brand new information, and I had listed that in my paper uh, several years ago. Uh, so I sent it to uh, my, quote, friend and acquaintance, uh, Bill Roberts, who is the editor of the American Journal of Cardiology, and he sent it out to reviewers, and the review... <laughs> <laughs> the reviewers thought it was terrible. <laughs> so it got rejected. Now, <clears throat> I must admit, uh, I use words like my healthiest patients are vegan. And um, in a scientific paper, you're not supposed to talk about yourself. Uh, and I couldn't come out and say the healthiest patients were vegan. Uh, and I didn't couch it in the phrase of in, in this clinic, uh, the healthiest patients are vegan. Uh, the clinic being my one-man practice at Thousand Asylum, where the Preventive Medicine Center is. So, um, uh, and there were a lot of other things that were just based on experience. And I kept thinking of the word, I didn't put it in my email to Bill Roberts, prescience, prescience. Now, I should not claim prescience. That means pre-science. In other words, I sort of knew ahead of time and I had this paper that was sort of ahead of itself. Well, that's bragging too much for the world, but the fact of the matter is I had all these things lined up which are becoming the latest hot topics and I knew it years ago and put it in this paper which got soundly rejected. So, um, back to the drawing board and um, I guess uh, if somebody can help a brother out, uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you know somebody who can write really well and understand scientific papers that could bring this thing around, I'd appreciate it. Uh, have them call the Preventive Medicine Center. Uh, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, this is not a pay-for-play uh, kind of circumstance. Enough of that um, going on. Oh, so I never finished. Breathe, drink, eat, exercise, and think. Unrealistic expectations is what's getting so many people into a tizzy these days. Uh, Chrissy Teigen apparently recently said something to the effect that uh, uh, the election of Donald Trump made her more nervous. For heaven's sakes, what kind of nonsense is that? There's always good news and there's always bad news and you don't allow yourself to become upset about it. Just Figure out what you're going to do. Take a mature position. Uh, what's that, 10 minutes? I have 10 minutes left. And this is 30 minutes. Okay, fine. All right, so, uh, so much for Chrissy Teigen. And I must admit, I'm very disappointed in my fellow Democrats. Uh, they are just continuously whining and whining. Look, 
Trump played by the rules and he won. Let's figure out how to get along with him as best possible. This eternal resistance idea is nothing, sort of, nothing short of silly. Okay, you want to resist, resist, but there's no sense to it. Stand for something. Don't stand against something. Oh, that reminds me. I'm going to play you. Uh, stop that. Uh, I'm going to play you something called Quinn's laws. And um, there's a bar in New York City that has a bartender that was written up by the New York Times as the best bartender in New York City. And his name is Doug Quinn. He owns his own bar. Uh, he broke up a fight and for political correctness, he got fired from being uh, the bartender at whatever bar he was at. And then he went over and opened up his own bar, Hudson Malone, and on the blackboard, he has um, what are called Quinn's Laws. Let's see, Hudson, H-U-D-S-O-N, Hudson, hmm. apparently, I don't, uh, I don't really have it. Um, so, uh, but it's, it's all the common sense things. Uh, I'd rather uh, die standing than live uh, submitting on my knees. Uh, be kind. Today is a blessing. Uh, stand for something. Uh, he has uh, these rules and, um, and they all make wonderful sense. Uh, I'd rather, I forget what it is, stand for something. Anyhow, uh, so I was talking about my fellow Democrats and stopping the whining. My goodness, uh, how childlike, uh, how childish. Uh, people complain about Trump. Uh, somebody said something to me that caught my attention about Trump. They said, those who support him take him seriously, but not literally. And those who oppose him take him literally, but not seriously. And I think that's an interesting way to look at it. When I read the New York Times, uh, I watched P.J. O'Rourke yesterday on um, C-SPAN, and he was interesting. Uh, he opposes Trump, but I thought he was so unfair in his criticisms. Uh, there wasn't any logic to it. Uh, uh, the, the, he said things like the four-year-old in the back of the room or something like that. Look, uh, he does behave in an erratic kind of fashion. And that's not been our uh, typical posture for President of the United States. But he is fulfilling the promises that got him elected. And you can't argue with a man that does the job for which he was hired. Uh, and he was hired by the way the system worked. Now, I'm fully aware that he did not win the popular vote. But that's not what determines who's elected president. Uh, the uh, Electoral College determines Stay in reality. Do not have unrealistic expectations. All right, let's see if I can find something here. Uh, find for your entertainment. Let's try this. All right, we'll pick this one. Oh, uh, Colin McEnroe. He and I have a little running rumble. Actually, it's sort of one-sided. Uh, I go on to his Facebook and uh, comment about his programs, which I think um, uh, he's been a little bit silly. Uh, he's so politically in one direction. It's so unbalanced. And even though there's very little economic support from the federal government, there is economic support for the federal government for his program and all of national public radio. And I think he's just far, far, far too unbalanced uh, in keeping the neutrality that is called for when you receive governmental support. Uh, anyhow, uh, he had a science uh, guy on uh, the show the other day, and he was wonderful. Colin was wonderful. Colin was perceptive, had great questions, had great comments, and I just wanted to say that about Colin McEnroe, uh, that um, agree or disagree, be gentlemanly, and listen to what he has to say. 
Uh, here's a, a quoting Voltaire. Opinion has caused more trouble in this little earth than plagues or earthquakes. Uh, the left should adjust to Trump rather than lose its mind, which it is currently doing. Well, that's sort of what I said. Uh, all right. So uh, let's get back to um, the anticoagulation issue. Uh, boy, I sure got away from that. The anticoagulation issue for atrial fibrillation is, is smoothest with these novel uh, NOACs, novel oral anticoagulants. And I believe that they have significantly displaced uh, the use of warfarin, which is dirt cheap, but then you have to get your blood tested and it's a little bit unstable with the NOAX. It's one pill a day or a pill twice a day, and that's all there is to it. And uh, I think that that's the way to go. A very, a very interesting step uh, has been taken. Somebody took patients with valvular heart disease, which was thought to only be safely, when you have atrial fibrillation, to only be safely controlled when you used warfarin. And what they found out was that people with moderate valvular heart disease, even mitral stenosis, did as well using the NOAX as warfarin. So if you had significant mitral regurgitation, I'm not saying large mitral regurgitation, but if you had moderate mitral regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis, and uh, atrial fibrillation, uh, the literature supports, the medical literature supports, that it is safe to use these NOACs, uh, Xarelto, uh, Eliquis, uh, uh, Pixaban, uh, Pradaxa, uh, in place of warfarin or Coumadin, as you may know it. And uh, in infinitely simpler, fewer bleeding episodes. I also read a study yesterday. There is a scoring test called I don't know how to say it, it's CHADS 2 VASC. And what it said is if you have a score of one, and I used to believe it had to be a score of two. If you have a score of one, uh, that you would do as well to be on a NOAC as uh, just aspirin. All right, got the two minute sign. I know that's a little confusing, but what I'm really saying is atrial fibrillation is becoming increasingly common. I think in almost all cases, it calls for the use of anticoagulation, not just aspirin. Um, there have been studies that show uh, if your score is zero, that you do worse on anticoagulation rather than no anticoagulation. I'm not sure. They ought to be doing MRIs of the brain to see if clots have gone there in these patients with these very low scores to determine whether or not they should be on a NOAC or not. Uh, that's not an entirely inclusive story. Another thing is that there are clinics now being established for the use of maximal dose of medication. And a study came out that talked about uh, uh, that showed that if you use half the maximal dose, your benefits are just as great as with maximal dose. Uh, I think that uh, these clinics that are going to get people to m maximal doses of congestive heart failure, uh, maximal doses of medications for the treatment of congestive heart failure are going to go too far and hurt people with the side effects of the medicines, meaning primarily kidneys and dehydration uh, and so on. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we have one minute. Wrap it up. Good day and God bless you all. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. See you next time.